Hey everyone, I'm Bill. I'm with Kalimoto TV. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the garage where today we have the Panigale V2 up on the lift for a modification that we've already done on the Street Fighter. That's right, we are upgrading the quick shifter to a Cordona quick shifter as well. Now, actually, Bogna kind of found out about this quick shifter first. Her friend, uh, who also rides a V2, has the Cordona quick shifter and raves about it. So, Bogna was looking into it at the same time. Robert was talking to me about the same Cordona quick shifter for the Street Fighter and I thought, well, let's order two. So today we're gonna walk through a step-by-step -step install on the V2 uh, on how to install it. Now, it's gonna be fairly easy because we're kind of simple to get to. The only problem is, is we do have to take off the rear set, which basically comes off the frame, the two bolts down here and there, which means we gotta take the lower fairing off. Not too big of a job, but once we get those two off, the quick shifter's right here, we're gonna unbolt it. The plug is right here, not too big of a problem. So, uh, should be a fairly simple job, probably 30 minutes tops. And then uh, Bogna is running the GP shift, so she wants to continue to run the GP shift. So we're gonna look at the programming and make sure that that works. So without further ado, Jeff, let's get the chesty cam on and uh, let's see uh, how quick we can install this uh, Cordona quick shifter. All right, so the first thing we're gonna start off with is we do have to get the rear set off, which means that we have to take bolt number one, two, three, four, five, six, and I believe there's another seventh bolt down here. And we just have to take this one side off. We only have to take the lower off. So let's go ahead and uh, start ripping out these bolts and get that off so we can expose this. Number one, two, three, four, five. All right, and then we have one bolt here and one bolt here. And then once that's done, we should be able to pull this gently, careful of the rear set here. And we should be able to pull this down and get this thing pulled off of here. All right, now it looks like we've got one last hidden bolt right here. All right, now onto the rear set, these two bolts. So uh, what I like to use, first you're gonna need a five millimeter and I like this swivel head. The swivel head works best because it's a, a little bit of an extension. So you can get it in here, work it in the back. And then once you've got it in the back, we're able to kind of swivel it back so we can miss the swing arm and break this thing loose. All right, so now we've got the rear set loose. Now we have to start working on this side here. Now this side, um, you know, the slave is right in the way of this bolt. And I think the easiest way is just to go ahead and remove this top bolt and slide this completely out. So you'll have to get a five millimeter Allen and uh, we'll crack this loose. So I've already started it. And uh, what we're gonna do is remember that that's just almost at 12 o'clock. So when we put it back in, we wanna be right just about at 12 o'clock, okay? So go ahead and remove this bolt fully. You'll have to remove this bolt, bolt fully, fully. Then what you're gonna do is uh, nice wire management here, uh, Ducati. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, undo the cables now, snip this cable tie and this cable tie, which takes us back to this plug right here, which I've kind of already dug out. This is our quick shifter plug. So go ahead and snip these cable ties here and then remove this bolt. And now we should be free that we can actually pull this straight out. All right, guys, well, sometimes it's a little bit of fighting for all of us. Uh, I ended up having to take the rear sets completely off and uh, take the shift rod off and take it out from the back there in order to get this loose off of here in order to be able to break this loose. So, um, yeah, so um, good luck with getting this off. Really, it's, it's just gonna be trying to figure it out, but I think the best way is removing this bolt and then removing this shaft and the rear set completely in order to get this all completely moved off, which then breaks you free here. So let's go ahead and run this wire all the way back and get it disconnected. And then we'll start running the new one. All right, now that we have this out, we're gonna remove this bolt, which is enough, it's a five millimeter. It's in there pretty good. So 
Let's hope we can get this thing removed uh, without stripping it. Be careful, use a very nice um, uh, Allen that gets all the way in there. And, oh, look at that. Huh. I guess I, I was messing with it earlier. I guess I loosened it. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this bolt here. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the box here. So you guys will see you've got the extension rod here, which is adjustable on the one end. And then you've got the uh, two adjusters here, one adjust into the uh, Cordona and then one adjust out. And then there's also an adjuster here. So uh, what the plan here is, is to start this. And the idea is to make sure that the eyelets are the same, okay? So the middle one, you wanna make sure that that's in enough. So I'm actually gonna hopefully get that screwed all the way in the middle and then get that tightened down. And then what we'll do is we will adjust the outside eyelets, which actually work almost perfect. I can see we're getting it down there. So we wanna make sure that we've got about like equal length here and here, and we want to uh, make sure that the eyelets here and here adjust to here and here. So you can see I put this the rod back on just hand tight here. And uh, again, we're gonna adjust this and make this the same distance. All right, now that we've adjusted the eyelets so they match up, your uh, Cordona uh, plug is going to be up at the top. So make sure that's lined up at the top. And then what you'll do is you'll start to go ahead and just finger tight these uh, lock bolts. And we're gonna start in the middle and then work our way out. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and take uh, a 10 millimeter, and I think that's an eight millimeter. And we're gonna hold this, lock this bolt down, lock this bolt down. And then we're gonna start going to the outsides and then lock those two lock bolts down. And that should be it. All right, so make sure you guys take your time here and get everything lined up nice and straight. So the cord should be all nice and straight. Your eyelets should be nice, nice and straight. Don't worry about that, that's not straight, but um, that, that doesn't need to be. And you wanna make sure you really get these locking nuts tight because you don't want these locking nuts to loosen and then these unwind because the vibration of the motorcycle will unwind these. So really spend a good amount of time. Now we're written ready to uh, go ahead and get this thing bolted back onto here. So we're gonna go ahead and take our washer, which was right in between, and go ahead and put that there. All right, now that that nut is in there, you can see the, the swivel is working fine. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and thread this in between the swing arm. And you see, this is a much thinner, um, a quick shifter so we're able to actually get it right in here now remember we are just at 12 o'clock so we want to try to get this adjusted to slip in right around the 12 o'clock all right so once you've slid it in you see we're just one tooth off one tooth you're going to tell if it's too far straight up and down or too far this way. So now that we've got that, we're gonna go ahead and grab a little Loctite. Uh, you see the red Loctite on that one. We're gonna use blue, because we wanna be able to take this off uh, just in case life happens. So we're gonna go ahead and put a little Loctite on here and then thread that through. All right, so we're not gonna be able to get the torque wrench in there to torque that down. If you guys didn't know, the little yellow markings when it goes across the bolt, that's actually a torque marker and those you see it right down there they put those on there once everything is torqued to tell you that it's been torqued so being that we can't get this torque marker back or the torque wrench in there we're going to tighten this down just to the point where those two yellow lines line up and that should be your torque marker So there we go, we've lined everything up. So now it's nice and secure, it's not moving anywhere. And we've got everything set up. So now we've got our cable run over here. So we're gonna run that here in a minute. But let's go ahead now and get everything set up on the rear set. Obviously I've gotta put my rear sets back together. If you guys have the stock rear sets, you're basically gonna reverse order, get this set up back on the back eyelet. Make sure if you're doing standard shift or GP shift that you get it in the right marker. 
All right, so just to recap, we've got everything tight here, here, all the way down. We've got our rear set mounted. Uh, make sure you lock tight all of your bolts in your rear set, okay? Uh, our locking nuts are nice and tight, and we basically now have our Cordona box, which we're gonna mount this here in a second. I'm gonna show you where I, I, I think I'm gonna mount it. Uh, but before we mount anything, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get this thing plugged in. Now, once we plug it in, uh, you'll see about an hour of messing around with the programming. Uh, I don't know, the bike works and shifts correctly. So I'm not sure that the programming is important. So we're gonna be testing this bike at Chuckwalla. Uh, so we went ahead and, and wrapped everything up. Um, I think that on the Ducatis, it doesn't matter. It's the, the shift placement. Like the Ducatis and the BMWs, you don't have to tell Ducati that you're shifting in GP or whatever. By changing this rod to the bottom from the top, top is standard, bottom is GP, that's what tells the bike that you're shifting in GP or standard. Um, so we couldn't get the program to work and I just rode the bike and uh, it actually shifts just fine. It actually shifts really, really good. So uh, we went ahead with some wire management. We went ahead and tucked everything in, used their double-sided tape here and we put it here uh, with a zip tie to make sure it's nice and secure. And then we ran the cable back and got it all plugged in. So now when you turn on the ignition, you will see it flash. Okay, so we know it's working. And so everything is all buttoned up. So now let's go ahead and get the side fairing on and do our final look. All right, well, we now have everything all buttoned up and fairing on, uh, module in, everything zip tied. We've got it right here. That's where we ended up mounting it. But uh, it's late, you guys. Uh, we are getting this thing basically off the lift. It's going into the trailer and we're heading down to Chuck Wallow. So stay tuned because uh, we'll have a full update video on this and the Street Fighter with the Cordona Quick Shifter. Now, we messed with the we messed with the uh, the programming, but I don't think that we need to. I don't think that you need to on this. Uh, I think it's just like the BMW. You just move that rod to the different position, and the bike automatically recognizes. So, uh, thank you guys for sticking around. We've got a couple more mods that we didn't film videos on, but we got a new uh, smoked windshield. And you guys, I'm really really sorry, but I didn't have time to film a video. But we do have a nice. Uh, super light chain and sprocket from Drive Systems uh, on with the uh, CNC racing bolts and uh, hub holder with the V4 Evo titanium uh, bolts on here. The gold DID chain, so super, super nice. Really excited to get this thing out. And uh, I think we went two up in the rear, so this thing should be a little bit of a wheelie monster. So thank you guys for sticking around for another video. Um, Make sure you guys do the normal, hit the subscribe button, smash the like button, and then ring the bell notification. The bell notification is gonna give you future notification. When we have this out on track next week, uh, we'll be able to give you guys some updates and make sure that this thing is working just perfect. But we do have it on the Street Fighter, the V2, and uh, I don't know, maybe we'll get one on the S1000R too. But thank you guys again, and uh, we'll see you guys next video. Bye guys.